Hello there everybody, HD Misty Gameplay here, and we're back with Assassin's Creed 3. This is part 2 of my walkthrough. Uh, we're still very early on in the game. The last part was primarily sort of warming up. This is still going to be quite a lot of warming up, really. Um, yeah, it was all sort of video and everything. So this part hopefully will have a bit more excitement, but yeah, this is part 2 of the walkthrough. Enjoy! This way, please. Oh, my apologies. Evening, Haytham. Reginald? I can't tell you how happy I was to hear they'd mounted this revival. Gay's best work by far. Have you seen it before? Once. My father brought me here as a child. Though I remember little of it. I don't suppose tonight will afford me the luxury of a proper viewing either. No, I'm afraid it won't. On to business then. Do you see him? And the statesman, because he's so great, thinks his trade as honest as mine. A lawyer is an honest employment, so is mine. Like me too, he acts in a double capacity, both against Roach and for him. For it is but fitting that we should protect and encourage cheats, since we live by him. Sir, Black Maul, that sick word of trial, comes on in the afternoon, and she hopes you will order matters... He's seated in one of the boxes above. The stairs are watched. We'll need to find another way up. You may satisfy that I'll soften the evidence. Tom Gags, I already have. found guilty. No lazy dog. When I took him the time before, I told him what would come to if he did not mend his hand. This is death without reprieve. I may venture to book it. For Tom A thousand pardons. Oh, my apologies. So sorry. I know I'll save her from the transportation. I can get more my staying in. Betty has brought more goods into our lock to year than any five of the game. And in truth, it is a pity to lose so good a customer. If none of the gang take her off, she may, in the common course of business, live at 12 months longer. I love to let women escape. A good sportsman always thinks the end part his life because the breed of the game depends on him. Besides, here the law allows us no reward. There's nothing to be got by the death of women, except our wives. Without dispute, she is a fine woman. It was to her I was obliged for my education. And to say a bold word, she hath trained up more young fellows to the business than the gaming table. Truly, Filch, thy observation is right. We and the surgeons are more beholden to women than all the professions beside. So, that call, that sick word of trial, comes on in the afternoon, and she hopes you will order matters so as to bring home. As I mentioned, very active and industrious, you may satisfy that I'll stop the evidence. Thank you. 
Found another way. Yes. But then you would have known. For what it's worth? I'm sorry. As am I. And how was the opera? Rather dull, truth be told. Shall we be off then? Aye. To Fleet and Bride. By your command. This book is to be believed, it will open the doors of a storehouse built by those who came before. Ah, yes. Those who ruled, reigned, and vanished from the world. Do we know what it is that to be held within? It could contain certain knowledge. Perhaps a weapon, or something as yet unknown, unfathomable in its construction and purpose. It could be any of these things, or none of them. They are still an enigma, these precursors. But of one thing I am certain, whatever waits behind those doors shall prove a great boon to us all. Or our enemies, should they find it first. They won't. You've seen to that. I assume you know where this storehouse is? Ah, Mr. Harrison. Gentlemen. How fair your calculations? I believe the site lies somewhere within this region. That's a lot of ground to cover. My apologies. Were that I could be more accurate. That's all right. It suffices for a start. And that is why we've called you here, Master Kenway. We'd like for you to travel to America, locate the storehouse, and take possession of its contents. I'm yours to command. Although a job of this magnitude will require more than just myself. Of course. Upon this paper are the names of five men sympathetic to our cause. Each is also uniquely suited to aid you in your endeavor. With them at your side, you'll want for nothing. Well, then I'd best be on my way. 
I knew our faith in you was not misplaced. We booked you passage to Boston. Your ship leaves at dawn. Go forth, Haytham, and bring honor to us all. Or are you simply taking passage? A bit of both, actually. I've been commissioned by the Royal Navy to study maritime illness. I'll be observing the crew during the journey. We have found that uh, sailors fare far better on the open seas than the rest of us. I hope to discover why that is. Well, I hope you are successful in your endeavors. As do I. Thank you for the kind words. Mr. Kenway, I just wanted to thank you again for taking me aboard and apologize for any inconvenience it may have caused. Inconvenience would be an understatement. I'm sorry, I don't follow. My ship was held in port for two days that we might accommodate you. I lost several contracts as a result. I had no idea. Of course not. You nobles are all the same. And then all will be well. Are you sure about that? Of course. Have I ever led you astray? Nah. Oh, no, you don't sit right with the others. Have faith, my friend. You'll see. Well, well. Seems our esteemed guest has deigned to grace us with his presence. You might want to head back to your quarters. Top deck's no place for tender parnell. <laughs> so I thought. And yet here you are. Fancy yourself a joker, eh? Let's see how funny you find this. That's enough, Graves. Stay out of this. Again, if you are, this is unwise. Why is that? You think I'm afraid of you? No, but you should be.
do you yield? Never! <clears throat> How do you like these odds? Explain yourself at once, Mr. Kenway. These thought we were simply passing the time with a bit of sport, Captain. How about you pass the time by doing your goddamn jobs instead? I wasn't aware I was paying you to loll about. A word, please, Mr. Kenway. Oh, I nearly forgot. There's your knife back. I don't care for you, Mr. Kenway. I've had nothing but trouble since you came aboard. Your problems have nothing to do with me. I beg your pardon? You're a poor leader, ill-tempered and cruel, and it's clear your crew has no respect for you. Look, I don't want to argue. In fact, I need a favor. Oh, this is rich. I suspect some of the men intend to mutiny. Really? What a surprise. As I cannot trust any of them, I am compelled to turn to you. And why should I help you? Because if they do intend to betray, I'm the only hope you have of reaching America alive. Well, what will it be? If what you say is true, what other choice do I have? Thank you. But let me be clear. Should you ever dare to insult or threaten me again, I'll not hesitate but to cut off your head myself. Are we understood? Excellent. Good day. Hello, sir. Do you expect we'll have a pleasant crossing? It is a quiet time of year, though rogue storms and troubled waters are not unheard of. But no need to fret. At worst, they'll prove an inconvenience. I'm more concerned about pirates and rogue privateers. Have you encountered them before? Aye. But the Providence is a strong ship, and her crew well trained. They will surely keep us safe. Mr. Kenway. Captain. Whatever they're up to, I believe it's coming to a head. I'd best get to work. Right, guys, I think that's a good place to leave it. Um... So yeah, that's the end of that part. Absurd and Sequence 1, I'm going to try and start getting them together a bit more so that it's more 
like each missions to do with like each part so I have one mission per part and I get it through like that it's a bit hard at the start of a game because they just sort of jumble loads together and there's none of the free roaming at the minute so it doesn't divide the missions up they're just sort of all together in a big mess but yeah I will get it a bit more organized but yeah come back for part three and yeah we'll be carrying on with this mission see you later guys